Well, hello there. In the last five or so years, I have explored way too many note-taking and productivity apps. So I feel that I would like to share my experiences with you using Evernote, Apple Notes, Google Docs, TickTick, Notion, and Superlist. Uh, not sponsored by any one of these people. Uh, let me share my opinions on these. We are gonna dive straight into it and start with Evernote. When I was a university student, Evernote was my go-to tool. I really loved the simplicity of it. It was super easy for me to structure. I had my folder, my notes within my folder, simple. So I love that it was like one of the first uh, cloud uh, apps that I used. I didn't have to save like hard copies of Word docs on my computer. So like in middle school and high school, I would actually have documents and like text files of all of my notes just saved on my computer. Laptop got stolen, lost all of that, whatever. So Evernote back in like 2014, was a game changer for me, 2014, 2015-ish, because I could store everything very, very simply with a folder and related notes. So I had folders for cooking, like recipes, um, my faith, notes from church, personal details, which is probably not so safe. I work in online security now, so don't have your personal details if you're not using a password manager. And over time, unfortunately, I feel that Evernote got a bit more bloated. When they changed their home layout, felt a bit very new for me. And this is a normal thing for, pe for people to experience when a product changes or brings an update or a brand refresh. It takes a while for users to get used. So when Evernote changed their interface, it just kind of, it's not an issue with the interface, but it just got too bloated for me. Too many things going on. I missed the very, very simple act of being able to save a bunch of notes in a folder on the cloud simple. It also got a bit pricey and I was only able to use it on a few devices. So now I have been sucked into the Apple ecosystem with iPhone, Apple Watch, iPad, and MacBook Pro. And I would like that ecosystem to speak to each other and be able to share that across everything. And I could not afford um, to pay too much for Evernote to be able to share it across all my devices. On that note then, segueing into Apple Notes. This is really like the most overlooked uh, note-taking tool that I think is honestly one of the best because um, it, if you have the Mac ecosystem, I mean, if you have the Apple ecosystem, it can sync across everything. Um, I make a note on my phone, like one minute later, I open it on my laptop, copy paste. I also use it as a way to write Instagram captions. So I have sweaty hands and I don't want to be typing on my phone because I make a lot of mistakes. So I type my Instagram captions on my laptop in Apple Notes. Then I just go to the Notes app on my phone, copy paste it, pop it into Instagram. Boom, Bob's your uncle. Really nice workflow for me. So in Apple Notes, I also have a bunch of folders. The folders that I have are ideas and design, admin, content ideas, mental health, recipes, my masters, travel ideas, languages, and faith. But mostly I will use Apple Notes for quick things that I can delete. So this would be temporary to-do lists if I am not accessing my main to-do list apps, uh, if I need to make a grocery list that I just want to delete right after, if somebody tells me like an important quote or any random piece of information that comes in to my life that I cannot store somewhere else, into Apple Notes, it will go. So honestly, I use this every single day of my life. Love it. Next is Google Docs. So I went through a period of like figuring out my online brand, um, just kind of panicking. And what I did was create a archive in Google Drive for everything related to lindybuddhas.com slash lindybuddhas YouTube slash Lindy Buddhist Instagram. I just archived and documented everything in Google Drive. So again, a cloud storage, a way for me to keep stuff very safely that living in South Africa, your devices are bound to get stolen sometime. It is what it is. So if I lose my stuff, it's all gonna be protected on Google Drive. So what I used Google Docs for is I went through every single blog post that I've written on my website, copy pasted it into Google Docs and created one massive archive of everything I've ever written. I did the same with all of my Instagram captions. And that way I have everything that I've written and 
that was a weird air bubble, everything that I've written and created in one single space as an archive. What that helps me do is kind of do like a global search. If I open my Google Doc and I search for language acquisition or language exchange as a keyword, I can find everything I've written there in once. I find that using Google Docs is great for larger bodies of text. I don't use it for notes such as Apple Notes. Neither do I use Apple Notes for larger bodies of text. So any content that I create will go into my Google Drive. I also have a folder that I use for any influencer things that I can share links with people like a speaker kit. Sometimes if I'm speaking at conferences, people will ask for a bio or a write up as well as some photos of me. So I have my little folder with my photos, my bio and a write up. I also create my eBooks in Google Docs because it's the easiest way for me to edit and format my content without moving between too many apps like Canva or Adobe um, InDesign. I used to use InDesign for my books, great product, but Google Docs is honestly, it gets the job done. Speaking of eBooks, if you are looking for ways to improve your writing in a foreign language, I have an eBook about 112 writing prompts that you can use, plus a guide on how to get started writing in a foreign language. And then I have the ultimate guide to language learning habits eBook as well. You can find both of these linked on my website or linked in the description of the video. So shameless self-promotion there about my eBooks that were made on Google Docs. Now, the next one is TikTok, game changer app for me. Wow. So I have moved on to another to-do list app now, but TikTok is still one that I'm sort of transitioning back and forth from. And I really, really like a recent update that they have an Eisenhower matrix, which means you can classify all of your to-dos that you make in the app by urgency and importance. So it's this matrix that you've probably seen like urgent and important, urgent and not important, not urgent and important and not urgent and not important. <laughs> so you have a grid where you categorize your tasks. That really helps me to manage my tasks because I tend to get very overwhelmed and I'll have like a brain dump on a piece of paper, write every single thing I need to do and then freak out like, when do I do this? Which one's more important? Ah. So if I put it into TickTick and I use their matrix, I can very easily open it up, see all of my tasks and their groupings and decide let me start with the urgent and important task right now. So I used to use TikTok as a place to store content ideas and stuff as well, like little to-do lists of um, videos I want to make, etc. But that's all moved over to Apple Notes now. And TikTok I just use for tick to-do lists. Now, one that I discovered literally yesterday and got so excited about it is I found it on Product Hunt. I love finding new apps on Product Hunt. I'm an absolute like a productivity and product design and tech and startup geek who just wants to discover new products all the time. So I'm really excited to use Superlist. I have found a few bugs, which is normal because they're very, very new, but this is Superlist, which works on my phone plus on my laptop. They speak to each other, which is great. And then I've got a little collection of stuff for work and then for personal. What I really like is you can embed lists and to do's into each other so much. I cannot show you my work notes because I work in <laughs> customer security and cryptocurrency and I cannot share anything there. But what I do is I have my folder for work. Then I have my folder for meeting notes. Inside my meeting notes, I have a page for the specific meeting. And then inside that page, I have the to-do lists um, and the notes that come from that meeting. And what's nice is you have like an inbox function and all of your tasks that are marked today will then go to your inbox. So you can have a whole view of all of the tasks that you need to do today or tomorrow without needing to go into those sub layers that you've created. I also find the interface very clean. There's a nice dark mode. We all love a dark mode and I have it on my laptop and my phone and it's synced across my devices. So I have kind of decided to move from TickTick over to Superlist, Superlist, Superlist. Um, really, really enjoying this app so far. And the last one, honorable mention, somebody's sprinkler just went off. Let me close my door. All right, the last one honorable mention goes to Notion. Back in COVID, when I sat in front of my computer more than I ever did in my life, I was obsessed 
with Notion. So no hate to them. I did make a video in collaboration with Notion before, which you can check out on how I literally organized my entire life in Notion. I loved it. But as I've seen happen with many Notion users who don't become Notion power users and instructors and template makers, Notion does tend to become a little bloated. Uh, there's too much that you can do, too much personalization. And what happened to me is I spent too much time on Notion trying to reorganize my page layouts and my formats and my um, Kanban boards and links and everything, adding colors, adding emojis, that I got overwhelmed and I was like, you know what, I kind of just want to go back to a clean sheet of paper <laughs> and write my stuff there. So bullet journaling on the side is another thing I want to talk about. So please let me know in the comments if you do want to see how I use my paper notebooks, my paper planners, um, my daily carry A5 notebook. Anyway, back to Notion just got way too much for me. What I did enjoy about it is I had like this daily tracker of my mood and one sentence a day. And you know, the tables that you could build in there were just more fun to use than a table you could make in like Google Sheets or Evernote or your notes app. So I did enjoy Notion a lot, but there was just too much going on and it was a little buggy on my mobile device. So if I really quickly wanted to access something, it just felt more slick and smooth and speedy to use Apple Notes to access information than it did to go into my Notion, have the app load, go into sub pages and find my information. So I still have a Notion account. We use it at work and it works perfectly in that use case. But for personal things, I just don't see a use case for Notion anymore, especially since I am trying to streamline all of the productivity tools I use. And when it comes to language learning, I actually keep most of my content on my hard drive. So any PDFs I have, any lessons that I teach will be either in um, Google Docs or on my hard drive. So that is pretty much my um, setup with how I use all of these tools. I hope it was interesting for you. And if you have any questions or if you want to share any tools that you use, please let me know in the comments. And if you want to make, if you want to make, if you would like me to make more videos about how I use paper notebooks or AI tools or any specifics into productivity or note taking apps, do let me know because I would happily do that. And thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.